People say in a one-on-one -on -one fight, always bet on Kaido, unless he's fighting one of these seven characters. In which case, definitely bet on them, because for someone so profoundly labeled as the strongest creature in the world, Kaido has actually been defeated on no less than seven occasions. We know who most of these characters are. One of them is a big surprise, and several of them are just plain big. So now let's reveal the shameful hidden history of Kaido. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and my shameful history began in 1989, which is the year that I was born, and that period of shame, unfortunately, has yet to conclude. Much like Kaido, an aquatic Oni, who actually holds one of the most impressive defeat records in all of One Piece. On this channel, we pretty much perpetually make fun of characters like Smoker and Jack for being horrendous failures in the art of battle combat, but in fictional reality, Kaido is probably the biggest loser that One Piece has to offer. Meanwhile, some of its biggest winners are Wet Bread, Danny Lopez, and Wopelhead, each of whom did the amazing thing of pressing the subscribe button for the Grand Line review, which will result in consistent injections of One Piece culture being administered directly into your YouTube feed. And if you'd like to be our next subscriber of the day, then hit the button and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. Also, this video is sponsored by Mecarina, the perfect game for people who love shooters but don't have time like they used to. People like me, withered and busy but still want to shoot some stuff. Mecarina offers short and action-packed matches with a wonderful fast-paced feel, which is greatly assisted by mechs like Killshot, whose job is to shoot things and to kill them, thus rendering them kill shot, which works particularly well on Mecarina's tight maps built for fast paced action, tactics, and constant encounters. So much so that you can play an action packed game from start to finish in just five minutes. Plus Mecarina's got a whole ton of special events happening this month, including special Easter and even Golden Week events for us weebs. Take part and you can get your hands on new weapons, amazing new skins, and much, much more. Mecarina's getting big and that means bigger prizes, bigger competition, and much more bigger of fun. It's completely free to play on Android and iOS right now, and you can use my personal link or scan the QR code to get bonuses worth $45. We're talking about one Steel Reaper skin, 500 A coins, and 70,000 credits to help kickstart your game. And if you're quick, you can add me to friends as Grand Line Guy, and we can play some matches together. So don't wait around. Back to you, me. Now throughout this video, we will also be playing Kaido Jenga, where after every loss Kaido encounters, we will be removing an equal amount of corresponding blocks from the Tower of Shame. And honestly, I don't think that a flimsy block-based game for kids is designed to support the massive weight of an Emperor of the Sea plonked on top of it. So please wish me luck because I will need it. Now many casual One Piece fans may not actually know that Kaido has been beaten seven times in the series, primarily because we've never seen any of them, but we do know of them. In fact, in chapter 795, when introducing good old Special K, the narrator goes on to say, to speak more on this man, he has tasted defeat as a pirate on seven occasions. And I imagine that the taste of defeat is akin to ordering meatballs at a restaurant, only for the chef to reply with, you can meet these balls, yeah. So probably not great. Alas, however, the fact is that Kaido has dined on Michelin star ball defeats no less than seven times. But, but, but the narrator also says that Kaido has been captured 18 times. So defeated seven times, but caught 18 times. And look, I'm no mathematician, but just like a Mount Druid student who dropped high school maths, this doesn't quite add up. Also, if you're not Australian, I uh, guess just think of the crappiest place you know. That is your Mount Druid. But who was the first to deliver Kaido a delicious dirt banquet? Well, that would be his former captain, Rox Zebek, a man who once held the ambition of becoming king of the world. And he would have gotten away with it as well, were it not for a dastardly moustached pirate and his donut loving marine sidekick. But Rox is an easy choice because because back then Kaido was a mere apprentice pirate and very defeatable. In fact, he wouldn't have even had his devil fruit at the time of joining the crew. And speaking of joining said crew, Rox was a man who held his gaggle together through sheer dominance and submission, a practice that Kaido very much adopted when starting his own crew, albeit perhaps a bit too literally with his first mate, who was made to wear his gimp outfit at all times. In fact, all of the beast pirates were very scantily clad leather outfits and, and horns, and it's all a bit questionable, really. Still, in order to recruit one times Kaido, Rox almost certainly displayed his dominance and delivered Kaido a solid defeat. Furthermore, Rox is one of five individuals who Kaido has committed to his like creepy mental power shrine, which says quite a bit about the temple of pain that Kaido worships at on a daily basis. Which means that it is time to remove a block for Rox and I am legitimately concerned that removing even one block will collapse this entire town. Oh no. Uh, oh. Right. 
All right, cool, one down and lots to go. And one of our remaining Supreme Seven is a man by the name of Whitebeard, who you may know better as the owner of famed pirate dog Stefan. Now, while Kaido was a mere apprentice fish, Whitebeard was much closer to his prime, being a whopping 15 whole age units more than Kaido. And given that the Rocks Pirates had a bit of a reputation for infighting, it seems almost inevitable that these two would clash at some point. Although not necessarily because Kaido has been stated to be someone who has challenged the four emperors. And challenging in this world usually usually involves some degree of punch fighting. It's very interesting though, because that line may imply that there was potentially a time when an emperor existed prior to Kaido holding the role, as well as prior to Shanks's reign as well. We'll get back to that in a bit. But Whitebeard is also one of Kaido's five holy figures. So holy in fact, that by the time he died, he had over 150 holes in his body from mainly bullet wounds and a lava fist. Meanwhile, his acolyte Ace was only able to achieve a mere one hole. But in honor of our second loss, we will now remove two blocks from Kaido's Tower of Shame. I am so nervous that this thing's just gonna tip over now. Ooh. Yeah. All right. One. Yeah, okay. And two. And bam, that is two more blocks. And as I think you can see, this is going to get very difficult very quickly. But if Kaido thought that a crescent mustache was trouble, then he was in no way ready for the curvaceous facial hair presented by Goldie Roger, who I will say with no speculation whatsoever attached, did legitimately defeat Kaido. Back in ye olde days, the Rocks Pirates saw their defeat at the ever mysterious island of God Valley. And according to one witness of the battle, the Rocks Pirates were wiped out harder than Absalom's hard drive after it was discovered that he was using his invisibility to spy on the women's bathrooms. And now he's dead. But God Valley was not the only opportunity Kaido had to be convincingly topped by Roger. In fact, in between the time of God Valley and when Roger stole away Kozuki Odin, a whopping 11 years passed. And look, mate, you can do a lot of losing in 11 years. Take Jack, for example. We've barely known him a month and he's already lost to Fujitora, Sengoku, Zunesha, Ashura Doji, a lasagna loving house cat, and twice to a big old papa. He's almost lost as much in one month as Kaido has in his entire career. So honestly, I'm not entirely sure who to be more impressed by. Kaido for the win-loss record, or Jack for speed running his way into critical mass of mediocrity with a billion berry bounty behind his name. And also just as a bit of a fun thing, Roger actually had an incredible effect on all of the Rocks pirates. You may or may not have noticed, but each time a member of the Rocks is defeated, their final thoughts are of Roger. When Whitebeard was dying, he thought back to his final meeting with Roger. When Big Mom was beaten on Wano, her last thoughts were cursing Roger. Ra, Roger, bad man, ra, 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 give me a cake. And even though this isn't technically canon or in any way canon, in One Piece film Strong World, upon being crushed by Luffy, Shiki screamed Roger's name, lamenting the fact that he was once again being defeated by a man from East Blue. And I just thought that was interesting and, and maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. But as a result, I'm very much looking forward to seeing Kaido's last relevant thoughts. But to continue the trend, Roger is yet another character whom Kaido worships. And that is all I need to seal the deal behind at least one of Kaido's seven defeats. In any case, it's time to fulfill Roger's legacy by further destabilizing Kaido. And as this is his third loss, we are going to remove three blocks. Okay, we get a fairly easy one here. Yep, okay, that one wasn't so bad. This is, okay, second one. Ah, yeah, there we go. Three more Kaido blocks, gone. All right, so far Kaido is managing to maintain his reputation as the best creature guy. And whilst the word best is usually spelled B-E-S-T, the Marines happen to spell it as G-A-R-P because Garp the hero is undeniably one of the finest life meets to have ever donned this pristine Marine cloak, as well as someone who canonically has also defeated Kaido. Using the God Valley logic, Garp very much contributed to Kaido's defeat. And as far as we know, said defeat could even have been as a direct result of Garp's knuckle sandwich accompanied by a side of fist fries, and even a dessert course of tropical punch. That's, that's literally all Garp does. He just, he hits things with fists and somehow he is still one of the strongest people to have ever lived. But even if it was Roger who decimated Kaido on God Valley, our fish friend was stated to have challenged the Marines on multiple occasions. And being completely realistic in this fictional pirate world, even not in his prime, there are very few Marines who would have been capable of reeling in a Kaido. The only person you could feasibly replace Garp with would be Sengoku or maybe even Kong if you're feeling, you know, particularly obscure. Now to be mildly annoying here, Garp is a character who does not appear in Kaido's mental image of the global elites. Of all of the boots Kaido warmly reminisces about being kicked in the face by, Garps are not among them. But either way, after being caught 18 times, there is a definite loss to be had here. And we will be awarding all of the glory to the man who more than likely did it, which is Mr. Garp. 
which means that we must now take away four blocks from Kaido's ever precarious Sing Tower of Shame. Oh, 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 here's one. one right there. Wow, the, uh, the lack of options is unfortunate. Three and four. Four more blocks gone. How high will your ceiling remain, Kaido? And furthermore, how long will it remain that high? Now our fifth Kaido killer, in the words of the great Spanish Frankie, is known as El Bastardo Perojo, ow, 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 which I've actually had translated and it roughly means the red-headed bastard, ow, ow, ow. But this is where we're going to need to channel our inner run DMC because it's tricky. There is evidence both for and against Shanks's role as some sort of Kaido conquistador. In his favor, Kaido does think rather highly of Mr. Shanks, identifying the Red Headman as one of the five holy battle boys, as well as the only one still remaining alive, actually. We also know that they, or at least their crews, engaged in a bit of fight battling while we were busy doing the Marineford stuff. But quite intriguingly, Kaido's entry in the Vivia card data book states that he hasn't found a worthy opponent since he fought Odin, which due to mathematics leaves our red head rather blue bald. As in theory, if this Odin business was true, then the oldest Shanks could have been if he fought Kaido would have been 19. To be fair, Luffy is only 19 years old, and God powers or not, he is currently fighting against a very prime Kaido, which makes me feel really bad because back when I was 19, my greatest achievement was learning how the dishwasher worked. To be even more fair, Oda does supervise, but he doesn't personally write the vast majority of Vivia card entries, and sometimes information is put in there to purposely be wrong for surprise story reasons. So even though we do quote it like the Bible, we should also treat it very much like the Bible, by which I mean not at all literally, because there is some really weird and questionable stuff in there. However, with all of the available information, information, I am forced to conclude that Kaido has indeed tasted a raspberry flavored Shanks defeat. And so we need to do the thing with the stuff and a fifth loss means five blocks. So this one right at the bottom here, that's like right there. One of five, two of five. We're gonna go with this one. <laughs> Three of five. One more block, come on. Feels like this should give in. Yeah, there we go. <sighs> okay, so a total of 15 blocks have now been removed and Kaido is wobbling horrifically, but he is still standing. So not particularly different to his usual drunken self. When it comes to sixth and seventh, this is where things get a bit frustratingly vague. But seven, uh, it's a big number. And there really aren't that many people who could thoroughly F this fish. Although speaking of, I suppose it is conceivable that at some stage in his early career, Kaido lost to Big Mom. Again, after the Rocks Pirates dissolved, the two of them had at least 11 years to do all sorts of physical activities, some of which could be fighting and some of which could be not that. There even used to be a theory that Kaido might be the father of the Charlotte triplets, who are Katakuri, Alvin, and Daifuku. However, this was before we discovered that Kaido was 59 years old, meaning that he would have needed to deliver his seed at the age of 11, which is questionable even for Japan. We should also probably touch on Odin. A couple of semantic wordsmiths may argue that Kaido might personally consider the Odin situation to be a bit of a defeat due to some rather underhanded tactics. However, very recently, we have also learned that Kaido's philosophy is that winners win, no matter how that win is won. So Odin is not going to be one of those seven defeats. Although fun fact, if he were alive today, Odin would be the exact same age as Kaido, which might make things rather confusing, particularly for their children. One of whom is quite literally trying to become Odin, whilst the other has even more literally become Kaido. In terms of other candidates, uh, maybe one of the young Marine Admirals. I mean, they're all within about 10 years of Kaido's age, so it's as feasible. Or perhaps even the other Rocks Pirates, Captain John, Silver Axe, maybe even Shiki. But unfortunately, we are running rather dry, when what we really need is a solid solid source of power moisture. But as a result of our power drought, I would also like to propose that of these seven defeats, some of them may have been against the same person or even same people, which is the plural of person. Regardless of what happened though, seven defeats did occur and we need to honor those last two through the official Jenga system. And if you're keeping up, that means we take away both six and seven blocks, which is a total of 13. And honestly, I didn't think we'd get this far, so let's, let's brace for disaster. One. Of thirteen. Two of thirteen. Oh, this feels like a load bearing one. Three of thirteen. Don't fall. You're gonna fall. Oh shit. We're not choosing that one. <laughs> Three of thirteen. Oh, I don't know about this. Four of thirteen. 
This one. <laughs> 5 of 13. Surely this middle one. Surely this is a safe block. No, it's not. 6 of 13. We're going with the other one. This is impossible. I'm gonna have to go for it. I'm gonna have to do this one. Stay. Oh, it's gonna fall. Oh, oh, oh. 7 of 13. Go for this guy here. I think the tower's gonna fall. Oh, I think the tower's gonna fall. No! We got to eight out of 13. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. But we're not done quite yet. Because seven, yeah, sure, it's a nice round number -y sort of thing, but that number is certainly going to become eight thanks to cartoon enthusiast, Monkey D. Luffy. And in honor of Luffy's reckless disregards for the rules of reality, he is also going to disregard the rules of this game. We're gonna, we're gonna do a bit of a smash. <laughs> Good job beating Kaido, Luffy. Because after Wano, Kaido's story with a complete set of eight defeats will have concluded. As has this video, so here is another one because of the good things and stuff. And I look forward to seeing you there.